The NL East has been by far the worst division in baseball this season. Both the Phillies and the Mets for majority of the season have been leading, with the Mets for most of the season been comfortably leading the division, looking forward to the playoffs. However, the Braves have came by storm and taken over the division. Let's take a look on how bad the Phillies and mainly the Mets choked the division lead and have pretty much given the Braves one of the easier trips to the playoffs in the MLB. So first, let's take a look at the Mets. On April 14th, they had their very first division lead of the season and held this up to recent date. At the deadline, they were, com they were still hanging on to the division lead and were able to make moves to acquire Javi Baez. But let's take a look at some of the players who have been on the Mets their entire season and have helped them to do nothing. Um, if you look at uh, offensive runs created, the differentials between this season and last season, there is only one player on the Mets that has a positive differential. This means that this they only have one player who is better this season than last season, and it's Jonathan VR, and he's slightly above league average. Players like Jeff McFaneel, Michael Conforto, James McCann, and Dominic Smith all were above average last season and are all now below average, having significant differentials. Um, as much as people like to look at Francisco Lindor and say how bad he's been this season, he really hasn't been that bad. He was pretty bad last year and makes his contract more surprising. If you were to look at the numbers last year and not go off of his previous seasons, he's clearly going through some things as a hitter. He was a much better back when Cleveland was good, and it's been a direct correlation to the team's success and his success. As we've seen with the Mets this year, he's a below-league average hitter, and you don't pay below-league average hitters $341 million. So that's really the start. Um, personally, I don't think Steve Cohen's doing a great job as owning. He's really just paying people. Javi Baez trade was kind of terrible. It doesn't make sense once everyone's healthy. He's a shortstop by trade that can play second base. But you have Francisco Lindor, who's not going to go anywhere when you're paying him that much money. He's going to be the shortstop. That's what you're paying for him to do. You're not going to pay him that much to play second base. It's a much easier position. You have Jeff McNeil, who's a solid second baseman. I know you can move him around, but second base is his natural position. And it's there's no need to mess with that. You need a third baseman. J.D. Davis is not good enough. And that's why they were rumored to Chris Davis. I'm sorry, Chris Bryant, not Chris Davis. But they didn't get Chris Bryant, and even the Giants, who kind of didn't need him based on how well they're playing, they got him, so they're just separating themselves by farther from the Mets, who at one point were considered a serious contender, and now just are not. And Steve Cohen's tweeting is just not helpful at all. I don't think tweeting is helpful. I don't think anyone will think that it's helpful. The only move that made sense this season is James McCann, and that clearly hasn't paid off at all. They needed a catcher, and they got a decent catcher, probably the best available at the time, without making a significant trade. Michael Conforto will be a free agent this offseason, and the way he's playing, I don't think he'll even get a contract. He could find himself playing in China by the end of the season. He's just been that bad. It is almost shocking how bad he's been, considering how good he was the year before. Now, let's take a look at the Phillies. People are trying to make a case for Bryce Harper and MVP. And, I mean, it makes sense. He brought his team to the division lead, but that was a while ago now. They're terrible again. They've been 2-8 and eight in the last 10, and Harper is not all to blame, but obviously one of the reasons is your team goes 2-8 and eight in a stretch. It goes to everyone when you're that bad for that long of time. Um... His numbers were never that impressive to put him towards the MVP season. It was really just recency bias. He was playing good for a short period of time. So it, you can't really say much about that. The decision to send Alec Baum down to AAA just doesn't make sense. They don't really have anyone better to put there. What are they going to do, play Ronald Torres more? That's a genius idea. Give the kid some chances, especially now that you played them. you played yourselves out of the playoffs. What's to lose at this point? He played great last season. It's obviously there. He's just got to play and show him belief. It's very hard for me to understand why teams don't show their belief in young players. It just isn't a smart idea to think just to send them down. Their pitching has been carried by Zach Wheeler all season. Their bullpen's a little bit better, but as a Yankee fan, I know Joe Girardi does not know how to manage a bullpen. 
as we've seen so far this season, Aaron Nola has been not great, not what you expect. You expect Aaron Nola to have a Zach Wheeler type of season, so they're going to want to spend some time with him and fix his issues because they're going to need him to be their ace. Zach Wheeler is a great pitcher, but he's if he's your number two, you're in a good spot. When he's your number one, that's not the greatest thing because especially in the NL East, you're competing with the Mets, you're competing with DeGrom, who his injury is another reason why the Mets have struggled of late. But you're going to need... Aaron Nola to be the better version of Aaron Nola that we've seen before if they want to win the division. Now, the Braves. The Braves have been great, and it's ever since the deadline. They made some moves, but nothing like over the top. Jorge Soler graded a solid addition. Jock Peterson, solid addition. Both quiet moves, nothing major. They're missing, obviously, Acuna Jr., who's should always be an MVP conversation the way he's playing and probably would have won it if he had stayed healthy, but he's been out for a while now, and they've been resilient and have now taken over the division. They were in third at the time of the... They were third, fourth place at the time of his injury, and now they're in first with the five-and-a-half game lead over the Phillies and the Mets. Um, their pitching has been a lot better. It struggled at the start of the season. A lot of it, easy way to think about it was Mike Soroka, but the bullpen's been a little bit better. Ian Anderson's still injured, one of their better younger pitchers. They've got a lot of young talent, and the way they're playing and the way that everyone else in the division is playing, they're going to rule this division for a while. Um, and they're going to end up in a situation like the Dodgers are, I think, where every year you can almost pencil them in as the winner of the division. Personally, the Braves are who I would have took to win this division. A lot of people would have with the Mets. I don't see the Braves losing it for a while, especially this year, losing Acuna. Uh, Ozzie Albies and Freddie Freeman, they're going to be there for a while. Once Acuna gets back, he'll be there for a while, and they're going to run this division for a lot of years to come. Uh, it's The Mets and the Phillies are going to have to do what the Mets did and just buy players to try to compete, but it's the Braves' division, and this was the only year for these teams, and they blew it.